Welcome back, episode 14. Today is October 12th, 2023. We got a whole weekend of football and activities ahead of us. Um, before we get going, if you're watching, please like, please subscribe. Um, it takes two seconds, helps me out a lot. Um, it's Prediction Thursday, um, as we do on this show. Every Thursday, we give our predictions for the weekend. Before college football, though, we had Shep versus Wimby this week on Monday. Um, Wimby, is, is, he's insane. I don't know. He had 20 and 5 in the first half on 8 of 13 with some ridiculous, some threes, just pull up threes off of a screen. He had one spin move up and under um, around Shep. Just, he's, he's a freak and he's going to be fun, a whole lot of fun to watch this year. Shep, though, 21 and 9 in the first half on 7 of 10 shooting. There was a point in the first quarter where he was absolutely everywhere. Um, and it just makes me so, so excited. Apparently, Brian Winnor reported there were like 20 scouts from other teams there watching him. Um, the league has to be shitting their pants a little bit right now um, with Shet and Wimby. And also, how great of a rivalry is that going to be for years to come? ESPN and the NBA are definitely going to push that hard. Um, we'll probably play the Spurs on Christmas for the next 10 years. Um, and I'm here for it. Uh, but... What really excited me about the preseason game was our roster. Cason Wallace, the other rookie this from this year, looked good. Um, Shay didn't play, and we, I mean, we're so deep. J Dub, Jalen Williams is. I've I've said since last year he could be an All Star, and he might do it this year. I mean, he could legitimately average twenty. Um, he has that type of power in him, um, as we saw last year at times. Just him getting more consistent and whatnot. Giddy's going to hopefully take another step. Um, it's really, really exciting times to be a Thunder fan. We had the national media kind of uh, propping us up a whole lot. Woj said we have he thinks we have four All-Stars and maybe an MVP one day um, in Chet. And then I think Bill Simmons on his podcast said he has us at fourth in the West this year, which I don't know if I agree with, but he said we're going to be like the – Kings from last year, um, which it, it's not going to take us as long as it took the Kings, but very excited for Thunder basketball this year. I'm going to try and be at as many games as possible, um, and Shea, I mean, Shea gets better every year. I don't know how he's going to do it this year. He averaged 31, 5, and 6 last year on 55% shooting. He's actually probably going to take a step back um, with his numbers, and the Shet just fixes the Thunder last year. Presti, I think, because all the players and everyone wanted to win last year, and you know Presti, I don't think, did. And so I think his way of, okay, try as hard as you want to win, um, but I'm not going to have a center on the roster um, because we have Shaq coming next year. And that was his way to level out the aggressiveness from the players trying to win. And But now we have a center. And I still think we need someone more beefy. Um, or I think the... Heaviest guy on our team is Jalen Williams at 6'9 and like 240 pounds. Still, it's like you, you don't have guys to guard Jokic and Bede, um, but it's like no one in the league really has guys to guard them, so not too concerned. Chet's going to block shots. If he gives us 15, 10, and 2 this year, um, one, he'll be in the front of the rookie of the year conversation, and two, we will be a six seed or higher. So very excited um, for the Thunder and this year coming up. Let's get to college football. Um, there's really, I had a couple games to talk about. There's not a ton. Should be a shorter episode. We'll see. Um, Kansas at Oklahoma State. The storyline coming in, obviously, Jalen Daniels, the Kansas quarterback, who was ruled out the last second against Texas when they played him a few weeks ago with back issues or back tightening or something. Um, but that's not what we're hearing on the old message boards around the Big 12. We're hearing that he's been saying he's sick, he's kind of faking the back injury that he had in the summer, and he might be on his way out of town. I heard that it might be because of an NIL deal. He's not getting paid what he thought, or he wants to get paid more. Um, I'm not exactly entirely sure. This could all be smoke, um, and he could actually be hurt, but it seems noteworthy um, that he is out again this week. And but Jason Bean, I'm telling you, is not bad. He torched, absolutely torched us last year when we went up to Lawrence. Um, he's good. He's probably one of the better backups you see in college football. So while Jalen Daniels was the preseason Big 12 player of the year, I don't think there's as much drop-off as you would expect going from that caliber of a player to a backup quarterback. Um, and for the Oklahoma State side of the ball, 
Um, can Alan Bowman stay in a rhythm? He seemed like he got in a rhythm last week, um, at least in the first half. And he seems like, you know, guys are starting to mesh together and we're confident now and, you know, we're kind of rolling and we're just going to have to bring that into BPS on Saturday and get a tough win against a good Kansas team. Um, but with no Jalen Daniels playing um, and me being a Pokes fan, I am going to take the Pokes. If you want a score prediction, I'm going 33-31. And Pokes plus three will be a best bet on Mahogany and McDonald's without Jalen Daniels. If Jalen Daniels was playing, um, I would not be taking plus three. I also think the line would probably move to like four and a half if he was playing. Um, but excited for this game. Um, this is either going to, for OSU, this is either going to be a, okay, we're actually back. And my over six and a half win total bet for the season is, you know, looking beautiful or it's we well, dropped at three and three and we kind of were like okay maybe the k-state game was a fluke i think people forget we only scored six points in the second half against k-state um it was still a great win but everything's not fixed um casey dunn maybe shouldn't run two reverses in the first drive maybe spread them out throughout the game um and let's get ollie the gordon ollie gordon the ball please um he's the best player on our team maybe um definitely certainly on offense um we need to get him the ball Oregon at Washington, the game day matchup of the weekend. For me, this is the Oregon defense versus the Washington offense. Oregon's Washington has not played a defense like Oregon. And Michael Penix and Washington, they are huge timing in a rhythm, quick um, type of offense. And I think Oregon can maybe disrupt that a little bit. Um, I think Oregon's going to score at least probably 41 points on the Washington defense. And so it's really going to come down to is the Washington offense going to score 50 or is the Oregon defense going to hold them to 35? And I think that's who ultimately what will ultimately decide the game. I think Oregon maybe is a more complete team. I think Washington maybe has more firepower, especially on offense. Um, but I think Oregon's a more complete team all the way around. Dan, Dan Lanning is doing an amazing job there. Um, and Bo Nix, I've gone so back and forth on him throughout his college career. I think I'm to the point where I don't trust him um, to go get, make, maybe make a Dylan Gabriel drive happen, um, but I do trust him to not lose his team the game um, like he was kind of at Auburn when he was there. And so I certainly think he's more of a plus on your team now than a negative. Um, and we've seen it. He's in the Heisman conversation because of it. Um, I don't think the Washington defense is going to pose a whole lot of threat to him in the Oregon offense. I think they're going to do their normal thing. And it's just how Washington plays on offense, really. Um, for me, I'm going Oregon plus three. Um, score prediction for 41-35. This is not a best bet. Not Mahogany or McDonald's. Um, I might have a small wager on it myself, but definitely not a best bet. Um, and yeah, well, I mean, exciting game. We're going to get to watch, hopefully, lots of points. I don't know what the over-under is. Probably should take the over. Um, USC at Notre Dame. I've gone back and forth on this one. Also, this one is not a best bet and not on Mahogany or McDonald's. Um, I've been on the Notre Dame train all, train all year. You guys have heard me talk about them and how good I thought they were. I still don't think they're a bad team. I think their athletic director might, you know, get some, like, this could have been a fireable offense having these four games, Ohio State, Duke on the road, Louisville on the road, and then USC back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back with no buy. Um and the Notre Dame defense, we all know they're going to be tested. Um, so I went. <laughs> people are jumping off the Notre Dame, Notre Dame train. I'll stay on for this one. Um, I went back and forth. It's like I'm almost picking this game based off Vegas. I feel like based on what we've seen from Notre Dame's offense and them not being able to score, uh, maybe they really think USC's defense is that bad and Notre, Notre Dame's going to have no problem putting up 40. But I think... The Notre Dame offense is going to have to put up 38, you know, 40 to win, um, which they haven't done this year in a meaningful game, not even gotten close. Because we know the USC, no matter how good the Notre Dame defense plays, they're putting up 35 at least. They're they're scoring five touchdowns. Caleb Williams will make that happen. Um, so, yeah, but I'll stay on the Notre Dame train this weekend. I think it's a hungry dog situation, um, wounded animal mode, as we like to say, for Notre Dame. I think USC is just skating by. I mean, the Arizona game could have woke them up, um, especially Caleb in that offense to where they can't be lackadaisical because their defense, they can't rely on them whatsoever. 
Um, but it should be an exciting game. Great brand matchup. Great jersey matchup. Um, I'm really looking forward to this one. And I'll go Notre Dame plus three and Notre Dame 34-31. Not confident, though. Not Will not be on Mahogany or McDonald's, that's for sure. Miami at North Carolina. Lines of North Carolina minus three and a half. Um, I like North Carolina. I picked them to be in the ACC championship playing for state, and it looks like that's probably what we're going to get, especially if they take care of business this week. Um, the Miami blunder, this probably could have been a – top 15 matchup if it wasn't for the Miami blunder we got last Saturday but still going to be a great game and I think it almost hurts North Carolina that that happened to Miami last week they're going to come out guns blazing like playing with their hair on fire Um, or they're going to come out super lackadaisical and be like oh we lost the game we shouldn't have our season's basically over Um, either way but I think Drake May and North Carolina I mean they are humming right now Syracuse not a bad team and they've laid it on them so I will be taking North Carolina Still not a mahogany or uh, McDonald's bet, but I am. I will be on North Carolina myself. Um, I think Drake May and them at home. I think they know that what they have in front of them. North Carolina is one of those one of those teams when they're when they're five and 6 and zero, they always drop a game they shouldn't to a Wake Forest or to a Syracuse type team, and they haven't looked like that this year. So I'm gonna think they get take care of business. I think they definitely are thinking about if they go undefeated, they will have a chance to be in the playoff if they beat Fuller, Fuller State in the ACC Championship, which will, the winner of that game, if they're both undefeated, will go to the playoff. So, I just hope their mind is on this game and not looking ahead, but with at the same time, them fully knowing why they need to win these games and what lies ahead of them. Um, if you told me, if you told North Carolina fans that their football program um, might make the four-team college football playoff and their basketball team didn't make the NCAA tournament last year. They probably look at you pretty crazy, but it certainly is a possibility. Um, and I'm just going to put this game on Drake May's shoulders. Um, you're the best player on the field. Um, it's hard to bet against the best player on the field, at least in my mind. Um, he's playing like the second best quarterback in the class. And I think that's all that matters is North Carolina has Drake May and Miami doesn't. So... That's really only all the main games I had to talk about in college football. It's going to be a quick episode. Um, NFL, I don't even really want to talk about any of those games. There's none that pop out. Um, but tonight, Thursday Night Football, I'm going Chiefs 34 or Chiefs 31, Broncos 24. I think the Broncos cover. That is a Mahogany or McDonald's bet, um, plus Broncos plus 11. I also have West Virginia, West Virginia minus 3. Personally, I'm going to take the money line against Houston. Um, and eat the juice, which I don't like doing, but in this situation, I feel like it's one of those. But on Mahogany and McDonald's, I want them all to be uh, even money bets, so West Virginia minus three, I'm still confident in it um, for two Thursday night plays. And Mahogany and McDonald's, in case you guys haven't heard, I'm sure you have. Um, I haven't shut up about it. We were absolutely rolling, 18-7-1 and seven and one over the past two weeks. I did go get Mahogany last night. Um, I posted it on Twitter. Got me a big old 12-ounce filet. Um, rare plus, um, if you know, you know, medium rare just doesn't even do it. I need more red. Um, but let's go through them this week, shall we? Ohio state minus 20. I told you guys to grab this earlier in the week. I think it stayed around there. So not missing out on a ton of line movement if you haven't grabbed it already, but we've been on it since Tuesday. Iowa state plus five, um, at Cincinnati. This line confuses me and it definitely could be a trap game. Um, but if it is, I'm falling for the trap. Iowa State's playing well. They've um, just killed TCU and look great. Um, Cincinnati, maybe Vegas likes their performance they put up against BYU and BYU. They you know hold BYU in a higher standard because they beat an SEC team and whatnot. But we'll take the points and the Cyclones on the road um, in Cincinnati. I told you about this one also earlier in the week. Penn State minus 41. It didn't care what I didn't care what this line was. Anything about it. I was taking Penn State because James Franklin, if there's anyone in the country that knows how to cover spreads, it's him. Um, they play UMass, who is absolutely terrible. Um, so I don't think it's crazy to ask them to win by six touchdowns. Um, Duke minus three um, against NC State. They're at home. And everyone's talking in the ACC now about Louisville, Florida State, um, and North Carolina. And Duke's sitting there with one loss um, asking what about us. I mean – they to a, to a good Notre Dame Notre Dame team at the last second pretty much so if they run the table it's gonna be hard 
it could be get crowded at the top there in the ACC, but I think Duke does actually have to play Florida State, North Carolina, like and Louisville, so they probably won't be there. But they're still a good football team. Riley Leonard out, their quarterback. I don't know exactly um, what that is. He ended up just being an ankle sprain, I think. Even if he doesn't play, I still like Duke. Um, I love backup quarterbacks. Vegas doesn't. They think a little bit less of a backup quarterback. I think it's still fine unless the guy comes in and is god-awful. Um, I don't think this is going to be the case, so we will be on Duke minus three against a North Carolina State team that's absolutely struggling. They just benched their quarterback, Brennan Armstrong, and they got they got problems over there. Um, and, yeah, I told you we're taking Pokes plus three. No Jalen Daniels um, at home. And I think this is a pivotal game for Oklahoma State. I mean, it's win this one and we're back on track. We can still go get eight, nine wins if we really, you know, play that well. Or it's lose this one and, okay, we're still just going to struggle to make a bowl game. And I think this game will answer that question for us. Um, and I think the folks get it done. Or at least don't lose by more than three. Um, and then I have a money line parlay. I don't like doing parlays. Some people like them. Um, but this one was too good to pass up. Louisville. Washington State and LSU money line parlay is like plus 125. They're all seven and a half uh, point favorites or more. I think LSU's 11, Washington State's eight. And they were all games that I might have taken the spread, but they're all games I think each team will win comfortably. So why not throw them all in a parlay? Um, and the NFL, I don't have many. Dolphins minus 13 and a half. Um, they're playing an absolutely terrible Carolina Panthers team. Um, the Dolphins can beat a bad team by two touchdowns if they, you know, like I said, if they sleep run, like I said last week, um, they are not capable of sleepwalking. Um, They're at least running because of how fast they are. Raiders minus three. Patriots are just an absolute dumpster fire. Um, Raiders coming off a big Thursday night football win, or Monday night football win, excuse me. And I think they're going to be juiced up. They, you know, if they realize they can win this one and put a little something together before they go in the thick of the AFC West, they're going to try it. But, I was looking at stats, and Jimmy Garoppolo has been playing awful this year. I mean, just if just if I look at the box score, um, his stats are worse than Mac Jones, who is absolutely terrible. I don't think Jimmy G's worse than Mac Jones, but I do think Jimmy G hasn't been playing very well. He's lucky he has Devontae Adams on his team. That's I'll say that. Um, but yeah, Raiders minus three. Um, just kind of a principal bet on the dumpster fire in New England going against them. And then Sunday Night Football, I went back and forth, but I'm going to go Bills minus 14 against the Giants. Prime time, I think they'll take care of business. I don't think Daniel Jones is playing for New York. Um, and I don't even know who their backup quarterback is. Um, Saquon might be back, but without that offensive line, it's just going to be bad. I think the Bills bounce back after the London loss to the Jags. And I think they cover 14 for us, which is a ton of points um, in the NFL. But when you have one of the best teams against one of the worst teams, it's certainly possible. Um, and I certainly believe it's going to happen. So there's your, I think it is nine picks for Mogney and McDonald's this week. A little lighter week. Um, and we're going to keep it rolling, though. And I said it was going to be a short show. I didn't know it was going to be this short. Um, and we were almost at 19 minutes, but that's all I got. Um, let's have a good weekend. Um, I'll be right once again, probably on most of the games about Oregon and um, Notre Dame. And I'll talk to you guys on Monday. As always, um, text a friend, check in on a friend, be a good person, 